Hi, Ben Constable with you from Spark Systems. This is the second of our two presentations on how to generate custom documents using Enterprise Architect 11's Report Generator. In our last webinar, I showed you how to make report templates in Enterprise Architect for the cover page, the table of contents, and the body of the document. Today, I'll show you how to define your own style sheets, make custom queries, and control the document structure with virtual documents. Let's revisit the target document that I regenerated from my model using EA last time. Our target was this data dictionary for an ArcGIS Geo database, a docx document in landscape format. In our last webinar, we made EA generate this cover page, the table of contents, and the body of the document from the model. But how did I create the style sheet that automatically applies, for example, this colour and font for each heading? Or this plain style for paragraph text? What about this list of hyperlinks for the child classes? You can't get that out of a built-in template field. So how can you define custom queries instead? And the content of this sample document just mimics the same order of packages and elements in Enterprise Architect's model hierarchy as displayed in the project browser. How would you generate a document with a different order? I'll answer these questions in turn, starting with how to create your own style sheet. When you publish documents from EA, you can save time and increase the potential for reuse by defining a style sheet to control the presentation of text in your document. For example, the colours, fonts and font effects your document uses for text in headings and paragraphs. EA can apply your style sheet dynamically when you generate the document. So, how do you make your own style sheet? The first step is to create one using the Resources window. From the Project menu, choose Resources. Under the Document Generation folder, right-click, User Templates, then Create Template. Name your style sheet. Choose the template type, style sheets. And get a head start by copying one of the system provided style sheets. Say, print medium. You can store your style sheets in a named folder or leave this field blank and EA will place it under the generic style sheets folder. The new style sheet is displayed in EA's template editor. You can see it's now also listed in the resources window, here. What you see in the template editor here is just a preview of how the styles will look when applied to some text. But say you want your cover headings to be blue instead. How could you change the style to another colour? First, you need to tell EA what style you're interested in changing. So right-click and choose Edit, Edit Style. This dialog lets you edit available styles or create new ones. We want to change the cover heading 1 style, so select that in the list, then click OK. Now EA puts this in a special mode for editing the style. We can modify the style either by right-clicking and using the context menu options, say under the font menu, or we can click on any of the toolbar's style buttons. So let's change the font colour. I'll set the font colour to dark blue. When I left click on the document, EA will apply my changes to the style and take me out of that special style editing mode, like so. Notice that the text cover heading 1 turns blue? Why? Because that text uses the cover heading 1 style as you see in the list box here. And that's the style I just changed. You can imagine how much more efficient it is then to update styles like this when it involves numerous templates across your document. Now you may want to define new styles of your own. For example, if you'd like to change the style of all the plain text in your document easily, I recommend creating your own version of the normal style, but give it a different name. You need a different name because EA ignores any custom style named normal, which it reserves for the default style. Let's create that new style now. We simply right-click and choose Edit, Edit Style, check the box to create a new style, 
name it normal text or another meaningful name. Then click OK. Now EA has put you in that special style editing mode. So set your style options and left click to stop editing the style and save your changes. Now if you use this style throughout your templates, you can quickly update the presentation options for the bulk of your document's text at any time. By the way, to see your new style in a template that you already have open, you just need to close the template and reopen it. And that'll refresh the list of styles there. In future versions of VA, that'll happen automatically for you. Well, here's the completed style sheet for my ArcGIS Data Dictionary report. You can see I've redefined styles for cover headings, table of contents entries, and I created my own version of the normal style. Well, how do I apply my style sheet? Firstly, I can use it to get a preview while I develop my data dictionary templates. I'll quickly create a new template now so you can see what I mean. Well, what would this template be like with the style sheet applied? Right click, use the menu File, Update Styles, choose the Data Dictionary Style Sheet. So you can see already it mostly uses Calibri font for the table text and for the various headings. Now secondly and most importantly, I can apply my style sheet when generating documents. Invoke the document generator by right-clicking the package of interest in the project browser. You see I'm generating the package named Smart Meter Geodatabase to this file with my data dictionary templates. But regardless of which template I choose, I can dramatically change the style of the text in the document with my choice of style sheet. Of course, I choose my data dictionary style sheet to get the particular style needed for this report. Sometimes you need to extract data from the model that isn't immediately available via the built-in template fields. In the previous webinar, I populated various table cells by using custom queries. Take for example this row, super type of. Here I want a hyperlinked list of all the elements that inherit from the current class. To achieve that, I used a custom query. Here's the template where I report on classes and call in a template fragment to populate this cell. Let's open that fragment with a double click. Notice I've enabled the custom section using the sections tree. To define the query, click the document options toolbar icon, go to the custom query tab, choose the custom SQL option and enter your SQL query. What facilitates the hyperlink list of results is contained in the first line of the query. First, you select the EA GUID, then concatenate that GUID with the text you want displayed, either a hard-coded string, or like here, I dynamically insert the label from the object name column. Then to tell EA you want the text hyperlinked via the GUID, alias your field with dash hyperlink as a suffix. You can do this for multiple columns in the query if you like. Some other points to note, you can use this hash object ID hash syntax to have VA insert the ID of the element currently being processed by the document generator. So I'm retrieving names of all related elements where the current element is the parent or end object in a generalization relationship. Secondly, a word of caution. When you use a SQL query, you may introduce some dependency on the type of model repository. So this query may work fine with an EAP project file, but not in a MySQL database, for example. Back in your template, you use the results of your query by right-clicking, insert custom field, then type the name of the alias from your query. And this process is the same regardless of whether you hyperlinked your custom fields. Now I haven't given complete details on how to write custom queries for reports, but here's a couple of tips. First, you can test your queries using EA's model search facility. For example, copy your query into EA's model search under the SQL tab. 
Replace any special tags with real data, then run your query. You see the expected results. Each child of the building class listed in the format needed for the document generator to hyperlink results. The target GUID first, then the text label, in this case the child class name. My second tip. You'll find some useful query examples in EA's help under the topic Create Search Definitions. Now what if you want to create reports that don't follow the same structure as your model hierarchy? EA's virtual documents are designed to help you with just that. Here's a larger target document produced from a real-world model. Now the document has a different structure to the model hierarchy. It's a data dictionary for the ArcGIS Pipeline Data Model, APDM. And thanks to Pete Veenstra for making the original model available and providing a template document for the required data dictionary. In fact, it was Pete's sample template that I used as a starting point for the data dictionary report templates I created in EA. So the styles used in this APDM data dictionary are virtually the same, but the structure is different. How so? Well, for example, notice in the table of contents this top-level heading for domains. Domain elements actually occur all throughout the model in various packages, but they're differentiated by a domain stereotype. In the sample APDM data dictionary template I was given, the domains were listed all together in a section at the end of the document. So, these domain elements needed to be excluded when their containing packages were first reported. So how would you tell EA to report some model elements first, then iterate over the model again to report other kinds of elements subsequently? you need to invoke your templates from EA's virtual documents. What are virtual documents exactly? Well, here's an example. There are two kinds of virtual document. Master and model documents. Both are model elements that you use to describe the structure and content of a report that you want EA to generate. The master document is a package that represents your entire document. It has an associated template that can specify settings that impact the entire document, such as headers and footers. A master document package contains a number of model document elements, as reflected in the project browser. Each model document represents a section of your target document. Model documents specify the content of a section by referring to packages, each modeled as an attribute. The order of these attributes then determines the order of how the package contents are generated into the document. Alternatively, the model document can refer to a project-wide model search, meaning that a section of your document can report on elements from anywhere in the model, completely independent of the project structure. To define the appearance of its content, the model document refers to a template. This means each section of your generated document can have a different appearance. Now let's apply these concepts to the APDM data dictionary document. The entire document is represented by this master document. It has two sections, each represented by a model document. Remember, this reflects the target document structure where general classes and tables were reported at the start, followed by the domain elements. How did I create the master document? Simply dragged it from the documentation toolbox. Once my model documents were in place, I dragged them from the project browser onto the master document. That defined my overall document structure. What about the master document's template? Well, notice the tagged values. I defined an APDM master report template. Opening that template in the resources view, you can see that it does nothing other than set the header and page orientation for the document. What about the two model documents? The first was straightforward. I just wanted every element that wasn't stereotyped coded value domain. So I dropped the topmost APDM package from the project browser onto the model document. I then filtered out the coded value domain elements. How? Well, I specified an exclude filter in the template for this model document. Let's look at its template. 
Notice the document options. First, there's a simple query to remove any packages that I know have only domain elements. So I prevent those packages appearing as empty headings in the first part of the generated document. To filter any packages with both domain and non-domain elements, I defined two simple element filters. I'm telling the report generator to include any elements where the stereotype is not equal to range domain or coded value domain. Finally, the model document to capture my domain section. There are two ways I could have pulled every domain element into this section. If I didn't care about the package structure at all, I would have simply defined a global model search to retrieve all elements with the domain stereotypes and specified the appropriate template. However, the sample document I was given showed that domains should be grouped under their owning packages. To achieve that, I dropped every package with domains onto the model document. In this model document's template, I could ensure that only domain elements were included using a simple stereotype filter. So without much effort, I was able to reuse most of my existing data dictionary template fragments to support a more complex target document for APDM. I only added a new cover page template and a template for the virtual documents. These enabled me to add some model specific filters and then call out to my existing templates. Well, how can EA now generate the entire APDM data dictionary document? Simply select the master document, right click, documentation, generate documentation. The input package and template are pre-selected by the master document. So choose your cover page, click generate, and you're done. Viewing the result, we see that first, the document lists only classes without the domain stereotype. Following that, our second model document inserted a dedicated section for domains. Here we see them grouped by the owning package, and documented in precisely the order defined by the model document. We've briefly considered how to define a style sheet, create custom queries to populate our reports, and use virtual documents to control the structure of our generator report. This concludes our short webinar series on document generation with Enterprise Architect 11. I hope you found it helpful. Happy modeling.